Can everyone hear me? All right. Thank you very much for the welcome. Uh, it's a real honor to be here. Uh, and I'm so excited to see how many people have come here to, to Blacksburg, to Blocksburg, <laughs> um, and are really interested in changing the world. What I want to talk about today is the bigger picture. Why are we doing blockchain? What, you know, we've talked about lots of different solutions, whether it's voting or stocks or shareholders, but we're doing all this because of uh, a bigger movement, right? I didn't get into this to do blockchain. I found blockchain because I wanted to change the world. I wanted to make the world a better place. You know, I set out with my mission, uh, which I've said over and over again, uh, is to find free market voluntary solutions for securing our life, our liberty, our property, and ensuring justice for everyone. That mission is bigger than blockchain. Blockchain is a tool. It's a very powerful tool. But if we focus on the technology, the blockchain too much, we lose sight of the bigger purpose. And the bigger purpose is what causes us to get up in the morning to pursue these technologies, to fight the fights with the regulators, to uh, struggle with the scaling the technology, getting adoption. Uh, these are all things we do for a higher purpose. So let's talk about the higher purpose and, and what I view it as. I view it as increasing the level of integrity in society. Integrity applies to everything from business, to government, to individual, to even our food systems. And when we have integrity, we can grow and we can prosper and we're in alignment with our environment. When we don't have integrity, things start to fall apart. There's opportunities for deception, manipulation, fraud. We lose trust in each other and we spend more time protecting ourselves from each other than working together to make the world a better place. I want you to think about all the different ways that we can improve integrity in our society and think about why we are doing things because that's more important than any individual solution. There are other ways to do currencies that don't rely on blockchain but still have integrity. So let's not get lost in the weeds. Blockchain's amazing. What I like about blockchain is it allows us to make society more efficient. Right, how many of you have bought a house? All right. You've seen all those papers you've signed? You have no idea what's in it? You, you have to buy uh, uh, insur title insurance, right? How many bought title insurance? Right, how many have had a problem with your title insurance and then couldn't get any collection on it? All right. <laughs> the, the point is, you, you sign a contract, and there's pages upon pages, and you sign the last page, and the last page is nothing more than a signature page. Well, you could be signing anything. They could just copy that last page and put whatever text they want. All right, we've gotten into a society that's so far removed from... Uh, the concept of integrity that we no longer, our contracts are beyond our comprehension. You're agreeing to stuff you don't know what you're agreeing to. Uh, and there's no proof of agreement. We've got laws that are so Byzantine, no one can even possibly know them all, yet you're accountable, right? They say ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Why well, challenge anyone in Congress to recite the laws of this country? So one of the strategies that blockchain is built on for, to, for increase in integrity is decentralization. Now that's a word that uh, I hate and I love because it's not defined well. But the spirit of decentralization is to put control down into the hands of more people, to have more variety, less monoculture. Right? If you look at centralization, you we have an election and we elect one president to decide for 320 million people. 
that's a very that's a very centralized decision making process. One blockchain, well, that's centralized in and of itself, regardless of the consensus algorithm you use. The blockchain has to decide which is the one true chain. So decentralization is about having many, many options, lots of variety, and not making everything the same. You know, in, in, in nature, there's lots of variety. And when there's not lots of variety, things are subject to disease, rot, decay. Uh, it's just not sustainable. It might appear to be more efficient in the short term, but it's a lot more fragile in the long term. We need competition and cooperation. We need respect for each other uh, to try different things and do things different ways, rather than trying to get everyone to adopt one way of doing things. And so blockchain technology allows smaller groups of people to form this community or that community. Uh, and we need to uh, have many different communities and not compete and say, oh, you know, my community has to grow and so in some other community needs to shrink. So that's what's going on in the cryptocurrency world. It's Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus EOS, right? And everyone's fighting over, you know, are you decentralized? Are you decentralized? The reality is collectively we are all decentralized by providing more options for people so that if one blockchain gets corrupted because all the miners happen to be in China, well then there's another option run by different people. And if one governance system uh, gets corrupted by having strong stakeholders that come uh, to get control, then there's other alternatives that people can move to. Imagine you only had one, one store where you could buy your food. Are you free? Or do you have to do whatever they say if you don't want to starve? Freedom is about having choices and making sure there's lots of them. In order to make sure you have choices, you have to make sure nothing gets too big. When things get big, they get centralized, they get inefficient, and then they fail all at once. If you look at the structure of our body, lots of individual cells. Each cell is centralized in itself, but they collaborate. And that, that design pattern scales throughout nature. Humanity is a bunch of individual humans. Uh, so that if some of us fail, others can succeed. We need to allow failure uh, of some people so that others can learn from those experiences. And that is the spirit of decentralization, is to have lots of competition, lots of variety, so that some can succeed, some can fail, and then you can have the, the principles of nature can express themselves through our technology, through our organization. You know, technology is kind of anti-nature. We tend to make things rigid, straight lines, make everything conform into one size fits all. Uh, but decentralization uh, means lots of variety. You know, with blockchain, we're trying to make it more scalable. We want to make the technology cheaper so that more people can be in smaller communities can get the benefit. So whether every company should have its own blockchain, uh, and we see this now, but really every company is going to have many different blockchains. Uh, you don't see people arguing for uh, one particular technology. I, everything should be C sharp. Right? How many people think everything should be C sharp and we should have no C++, no Java? Right? That just doesn't make sense. We have a variety of languages. Each one serves its purpose. We have a variety of blockchains. What I'm doing at block one is building the technology, making it more accessible, more easier to use so that more people can experiment, so that people here can pick it up and start building things more efficiently, faster, and have uh, uh, just more variety. You've, you've heard a lot of the potential ideas here the past two days of things people are working on. But the reality is, if anywhere two or more people need to collaborate, you need a blockchain. You need a way of, of keeping track of who agreed to what, where. You need social networks that prove identity, build those relationships, 
uh, that don't rely on centralized identity providers, right? Governments control your ID. They, they say who you are. But what we really want in society is a mesh of identity where you are who you are because your friends are, and they are who they are because of their friends. And that will uniquely identify every individual person. And that provides more security. Like we're using these technologies, private keys, uh, on hardware devices. It really protects your identity. And when your identity is strong, then we can do transparent elections. The idea of having integrity in our elections is, is fundamental. Because if we can't have integrity in our elections and some other thing has priority, like there's thinking, well, what about coercion? What about this? Uh, we, we should first err on the side of integrity, which means you can prove who you voted for. You can prove um, that the vote was counted and that everyone who is participating is a real person. That is the first level of integrity. And when we compromise our integrity because of concerns about privacy and, and we design a system where it's actually impossible to prove that the election was honest, I don't care which voting machine system you use, paper ballots, why not? It's not who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. And if you can't count the votes, and you can't verify that everyone's a valid voter, uh, and you can't write the software you're using to count the votes, and you have to rely on someone else, you've compromised the integrity of the system. But we live in a society where people uh, are trained in the conception that it has to be a secret and it can't know, and therefore we're enforcing, and it's actually against the law in many places, to have a, system, a voting system that has integrity to it. What I'm getting back here with these examples is that if we lose the, the focus of integrity, you can build systems without integrity on a blockchain. Blockchain will make sure everyone said they uh, signed what they said and the order in which they said it, and you can all agree on the common outcome. But it has to be, it can be used for good and it can be used for evil. So that's why it's important to think about the higher picture. Blockchain is a tool that, uh, that gives us the possibility to create structures and communities and organizations where the level of integrity is higher uh, than it's ever been before, where the cost of achieving it is lower, where the opportunities for fraud and deception are minimized. Now, when you go to buy a company, you have to do your due diligence. How do you know you've got every uh, contract that company has ever signed and all the terms it's ever agreed to? You can't do that today. You hire attorneys to sift through all kinds of documents, and then you ask the sellers to make representations and <laughs> warranties that they've disclosed everything to you. Um, but it's not actually possible to know you have everything. Blockchain makes those things possible. It allows you to accelerate it. You know, blockchain makes it easier to get into the capital markets and to have new ways of providing incentives, uh, accounting for people's contributions to society, whether it's donations to your church uh, or it's um, anything else you want to track. Uh, you, you know, you use QuickBooks and you do your accounting. You want to minimize the fraud. You want to automate your taxes. How many people would like your taxes to be automated and not have to deal with the IRS anymore? Okay. You know, how many people don't want to have your deposits uh, at your bank go disappear because the, the bank violates some rules and they don't know? No one goes to jail, but you lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right? We, can't, we shouldn't be having that in society, not in our day and age. And, you know, in theory, if we had more integrity, these types of things wouldn't happen. And if we built that into our culture, we wouldn't need blockchain as much. But blockchain allows us to commit to integrity with intention rather than just hoping that it exists. And that's why every bank, every government, when you're doing buying and selling land, uh, every contract you sign, uh, you know, when you get married, uh, the keys to your car, all these things need to be, can be tracked and dealt with much more efficiently. Uh, and you eliminate a lot of the work that's currently placed on regulators to try to enforce integrity from the outside. 
So when businesses have to make the decision of do I build on blockchain or do I not, the real question is, do I want to build a system with integrity by design or do I want to build a system where I compromise integrity for the sake of uh, you know, efficiency? Uh, although I think blockchain can become just as efficient as the other solutions. Um, or because, hey, I actually like the ability to backdate things and change things after the fact. And uh, I like the flexibility it gives me to not actually commit to, to things and go back on things. Or I like to pay lawyers lots of money to uh, fight over the vague terms they throw in contracts no one can understand. All right, there's, when you build your business on blockchain, you're telling the world you're committed to integrity. You're telling your customers you're committed to it. You're telling your employees you're committed to it. And that makes all the difference in the final outcome. Because uh, if your heart's not in it for the right reasons, then you might have a blockchain, but you're not going to stop the corruption. Uh, and so that's my high level view uh, of where I think all this goes. It's a reminder of why we got here in the first place, because we're tired of the rich getting richer because they're leveraging systems and that are biased towards centralized powers, centralized decision making. We're tired of one size fits all solutions, uh, whether it's for health care or food inspections or uh, you know whatever your house permitting rules are, right? We have a society that's increasingly one size fits all. Uh, but then we don't have integrity in the institutions that are running these things. Uh, and we, we keep thinking bigger government, bigger organizations will solve all the corruption. But all they do today is create more power, more concentrated, more corruption. Uh, and that's why we decentralize. That's why we put it, build integrity in at the very foundation. We need to demand it from all of our institutions whether it's our universities, whether it's our DMV. We need to be demanding it, and we need to be demanding it from the companies we do business with.